praise his holy name forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a glorious day that you've made, Father. From the foundation of the world, we do rejoice and we are glad in it. For your mighty right hand and your holy arm have already gotten our Father God in us the victory. We praise you, Father. We just bless you. We just worship you and adore you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My people understand this in this body and throughout the world. Oh, my people, in these United States, that things are moving in a breakneck speed up here in heaven, and you're about to see the display of these things down here in the earth shortly. I want my people in a preparatory mode for these things. Yes, 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 for the things will be t in a timely manner where I'm positioning all people. Yeah, you who have been born in this time, in this place, this destiny that I fulfilled you with, all those new creations, you're going to go forth as power, super beings in these last hours and days. Where this is not the time of being normal. This is not the time of normalization whatsoever. For I, it, I, it detests me. There's nothing normal up here in heaven. <clears throat> Everything is by design, supernatural. For my saints walk as supermen here. But that's the way it was designed to be in the earth. That's how Adam was supposed to be. Jesus showed mankind how man was supposed to walk. How Adam was supposed to walk. And look at the signs and wonders and, and the display <clears throat> and the miracles that he did here in the earth. And my son said, not only will you do these same works, but greater works will you do than even these. And my son did stupendous things. But those things will be normal. I want your supernatural to be normal. These are the days where death will be put underfoot. And death is anything that interposes itself against you, my beloved. Anything that interposes against you, that brings you into a situation where you can't get victory over, that limits your superman or superwoman status and ability in me, to work signs, wonders, and miracles. I will not tolerate death whatsoever, especially in these days and these hours and these times. <clears throat> when I died, I gave you everlasting life. My son paid the price for it, not for your, just for your eternal abode up here in heaven, but I've restored the uh, immortality. I told you in 2 Timothy 1, 9 and 10 that life and immortality has been established and death has been abolished. It's time for my church to wake up to the revelation of what I did for you in these last days, in these last hours and last times, through the death, burial, and resurrection of my son, that I restored you back into a class of being that is in union, that is one with my son. He's the head and you're the body. And see yourself with no difference. My people must start doing that. They must start seeing themselves through the whole act of the finished work. And although Jesus was your substitute on that cross, you laid there, you know, oh yeah, oh yeah, you paid the price in the sense that my son did it for you. You were destined for hell. You had no chance. You had no chance. But the Son of the Living God came as a sinless being and as a perfect sin offering and a blood offering to purge away all of your sin, your iniquity, and all of my all of my anger, my wrath, everything that was all my judgment fell upon man in the person of my son Jesus Christ. And now I've been satiated and I see you in the beloved as a perfect being, a sinless being, a righteous being a being who should walk in the demonstration of a power and glory. No more death here in the earth. And death is anything that would cause a cessation of you walking in a limitation of your superman or woman's status on this earth. And I'll not tolerate that. So that is why it's so important for you to understand these doctrines, this teaching, the teachings of the kingdom of God and work in that kingdom, the kingdom of dominion over time. This is a timely message from the very throne room of Almighty God, restored, yes, and stored away for these last days and last hours of time. And I want my people walking in these things. I want them to walk in them into a Superman belief. I want you to come into that consciousness that nothing is impossible to you. I want you to meditate all day long that you have everlasting life and speak it into every organ, tissue, and cell of your body, that you have life and immortality. This everlasting life and immortality surges through you with that resurrection power, surging through every organ, tissue, and cell, dominating the laws of sin and death. And the laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus put you into a status at my own right hand inside of my son. And I will not tolerate anything lower than what I can do in my son and through him down here in the earth. For the times of you seeing yourself in a separated manner from my son are over. Those days are finished. And I want my people to walk in the union and understanding that the oneness factor, the union that you have in my son, is inseparable. I see no difference. He sees no difference. And it's time that the church and the body of Christ itself sees no difference. I, mean, I want my people to see these things. I want them to walk in the revelation of these things. This is the time. This is the place. And these are the hours and times of your appointed time and destiny, my people. And I want you to receive it. Oh, yes, I want you to receive it. And, Juana, I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this, my daughter. 
my scripture, my, my Bible says, that, oh yeah, you're not to be a burden bearer. My son was your burden bearer. All stresses, everything that would cause any anxiety, fretfulness, cares, or, or, or worries within you, oh yes, yes, you're to roll them. You're to cast those cares over upon my son, for he's the only one that can take those situations from you and cause and work a miracle in, those, in, in substitution in place of that. You're not to be bogged down with those things. You're to be walk free. You're to walk carefree in my rest, in my love, knowing that I love you, I, I hold you, I, I hold you high in my esteem. My eyes are ever set over you. Yes, and my thoughts towards you are innumerable, like I said in my word, as the sands of the sea. For my love towards you is ever, ever, never, everlasting, and there will be nothing that will ever separate me from you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. No, I won't. No, I won't. No, I won't. And understand this, I want you to let go of all these situations, all these things that are bogging your spirit down as a heavy weight, and roll it over, roll it over upon me, roll your, all your cares upon me, for I care for you affectionately and I care for you watchfully. I don't want my people to have any earthly cares whatsoever, I want you to walk in peace and my rest, for I paid the price for that as well. And it's time, my daughter, it's time, my daughter, that you rise up and walk in that stature. And don't you let the enemy tolerate you with these oppressing thoughts and these oppressing situations. You put them underneath your feet and you stop on him in the name of thy holy child Jesus. And the enemy will loose you and let you go because the power of my son and his blood is everlasting and has been destined for you to walk in the freedom of my liberty. Receive that, my daughter, in the name of thy holy child Jesus my people, and I want you to understand this message that is coming thereafter and corresponding thereafter and put it into everyday use and practice. Don't let the things slip and don't you let them go. Iron sharps iron and you know, use one another and your fellowship with one another and the fellowship that you have with my son. And I want you to grow into these things rapidly. I'm going to do a quick work in your hearts and your spirit for the time is short and there's no more time for delay. Receive these words, my beloved, this day. Receive these words for these are the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for his blessed word. God is good, saints. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. You have your Bibles open. <clears throat> this is part 15 of our teaching, Dominion Over Time. Dominion Over Time, part 15. Uh, turn your Bibles real quickly because we're going to Scan over a couple things I want to bring to your attention. <clears throat> Psalm 139, we'll start with verse, uh, well, I, for brevity and for sake of time, go over the, you know, part 14 of the teaching also and part 13 because we talked about these. But I want to earmark and show you a couple of things that are very important. Starting in verse 16, it says, Thine eye, talking about God's eyes, did see my substance. The word substance there means your members or your physical frame or your organs of your body, your organs, tissues, and cells, okay? Yet being unperfect, in other words, they haven't come into fulfillment of gestation yet, and in thy book, there's that book, and that's the book of life that God compiles upon you and for you every day. Remember the four steps that we always talked about, saints, and how you rise up in the morning. The first thing, praise the Father, you know, bless the Lord Jesus Christ, and glorify the Holy Spirit that dwells within you and upon you for all that they're doing for you now and all that they're going to do for you throughout the day. Um, it's a precious thing and it's a glorified thing that you do these things. And God counts it a holy thing that you do these things. Amen. The second thing you do, always, always remember this, activate the kingdom of God. Simply say, Lord, I activate the kingdom of God that's within me and among me, and I believe it. It's done. By faith that I'm walking in the kingdom right now. Now you've established the atmosphere of heaven down here in the earth. Remember, in heaven, everything's perfect, everything's done, no sickness or disease. And when you establish it down here on the earth, then miracles happen. Jesus told the disciples when they entered into a house, tell them, the first thing out of your mouth, say, the kingdom of God is here. Why? Because now you're about to bring heaven's atmosphere, displacing this law of sin and death atmosphere of the earth. Now you've got heaven interimposing itself in that area, in that geographical spot that you're in, and now the miracles of, and of the glory and, and the life of God and the perfection of God and his holy blood can minister unto those people. And that's why healing ensued right after that. Amen. The third thing I want you to do is make sure Jesus is Lord over your life. Not just Savior, but Lord and tell them so. Lord, you're Lord over every second, every minute, every hour of this whole day. Um, the nighttime when I go to sleep and then the next day as well. You dominate everything, Lord God. And, and you dominate the laws of sin and death. And you have my whole life, spirit, soul, and body financially, physically, socially, and economically, and you go forth and do what you will. And lastly, loosen those angels. 
<clears throat> loosen those glorious angels from the throne room of Almighty God who have read your book. Inside those books are innumerable numbers of thoughts, prayers, and, and desires that God had for you that day. And say, I, you know, break the power of the devil. I bind, you know, the spirit of death. I bind the devil himself. I put down a restraining order and loose an extra angel so that my words from those angels can get through. And I want my Lord Jesus Christ who's Lord over my life for that day. Not just Lord, but he's Lord and Savior and he's Lord and Deliverer and he's Curse Remover. Amen. And he's your you know, prosperity. He's your favor. Um, he's your provider. He's all that. He's going to read those books. I'm sorry, the words from that book. Excuse me. And he's, gonna, he's the only one who has the divinity and the power to take an innumerable number of thoughts and desires from the Holy Father and then make distribution and ministration as the apostle and high priest over your life and over the church. Amen? So <clears throat> do those things and never forget that. So we see here, it says in uh, verse 16 in the middle, you saw me <clears throat> in thy book, all my members or my organs, tissues, and cells that were written in that book. Okay, and what they should be or how they should be fashioned, meaning your physical frame and your internal organs, when yet there was yet none of them. I know there's no outlaw, outlaw proof, but God had his eye on you all the whole time. Verse 17 says, How precious also are the thoughts or desires, that word thoughts in the Hebrew is desires as well, how precious are thy thoughts or desires unto me, O God, how great is the sum of them. Now, what is the number and the sum of God's thoughts and desires of you in one particular day of your life? Verse 18 tells us, If I were able to count them, or if I should count them, they are more than the number of the sand, and we know that sand's on a seashore, amen? And it's impossible for you to actually write that down. So that's how, how much God thinks about you all day long. That's how much he has you in the centerpiece of his thoughts. People think, well, God's not thinking about me. Yes, he is, and he never stopped thinking about you. He's thinking about how you became a jewel in the finished works of Jesus and how perfect you are and accepted you are in the beloved Christ. Amen? And then we talked about, real briefly, you don't have to turn there, but in Malachi 3.16, the reverse, where God also has in that same book how many times you know, he recorded every thought that you had about him during the day. All the, how many times you were meditating, how many times you were making declarations, how many times you were praising him, how many times you were lifting up prayers for yourself, for the nation, um, for other children of God, and, and for the you know, people that are in destitution. Every time you thought about the Lord, he wrote that down in a book as well. It's called the Book of Remembrance, and it's a memorial before God. Amen. And that's very important. Now, he had a person ask me, well, how do you know that the thoughts are always going to be good? Well, James 1.17 tells us that every good gift and every good gift, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So everything's got to be good. Everything that is good is deposited and we release from God down here in the earth. Now, what I want you to do, I'm going to prove to you that there's a corresponding verse for that, that every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from God. Then I want you to turn to the book of Jeremiah. It's right after Isaiah. And before Ezekiel. Okay. Jeremiah 29th chapter. A lot of you are familiar with this verse. And that's a good thing. But a lot of people have said, well, how do you know his thoughts are always going to be good? And he might be angry with me because of something I might have did. No, you didn't understand the prophecy that was just given. All God's anger, all of his judgment against you, all of his wrath was laid upon Jesus Christ. And now all of it was burned up as chaff. Amen? God sees you perfect in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, in Jeremiah 29, 11, let's find out how what those thoughts are as the number, as a innumerable as they are as the sands of the sea. These are the thoughts. Ready? Here we go. Verse 11. For I know, this is God talking, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. See, he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. Remember the innumerable ones, right? Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not just reconciliation, but remember we're talking about to be one and to be set at one again. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. That's what it says. Okay, not of evil. And to give you an expected end. You know what that expected end means? See, everybody has an expected end when they pray. What is it that you want prayed? What is it that you desire? What is it that you want to have come to pass? That's your expected end. I'm going to give that expected end to you. And that's a part of what's written into those books on the daily that's why you should release those angels every day. Every day your angels read this book about you 
and what the Lord had for you destined for this day. Okay, in this particular day, it's the 13th day of June 2021 on a Sunday. Lord, send forth thine angels with the words that you have, those innumerable numbers of words as the sand of the sea, come down and minister them unto me. But give them unto Jesus, who now can make distribution of them, administration of them into my personal life, so I can enjoy the blessing that God had earmarked for me today. Amen. But look at that verse. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not destruction or travail or tumult, okay? Thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you your expected end. So in other words, those thoughts are always towards his goodness being ministered unto you, his compassion and his blessing. Do I have an amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> now, let's go to the verse that we let off with last week, Colossians 1.20, and we'll gloss over that as well. And then we're going to really get into our teaching on how to use dominion over time, how to use time travel to dominate the laws of sin and death in the Lord Jesus Christ in doing so. <clears throat> but let's look at um, Colossians 1.20 first. Then right after that, we'll go to 2 Corinthians 1.20. It says here in verse 20 of Colossians 1, And having made peace, there's that word peace again in the New Testament, it means to be one with God through the blood of Christ. We got one, we're back to being one with him. And to be set at one again. We were one in the beginning, we fell, but the cross, death, burial, resurrection, brought us back into union and restoration and reconciliation with God himself. Okay, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Now, what I love about these verses is not, I mean, some of the words are superlative, like peace, blood, reconcile, heaven, earth, and that. But that, to me, is a sidebar. What I think is the most important wording in those verses are the terms and the verbs in having made, okay, or hath made. In other words, this already happened. It's already been done. It's already been a set event. Okay, and it's already been written in your book how it happened. And then having made peace through the blood of, your, of his cross, by him to reconcile all things. So God put all things within Christ and all things are reconciled by him. Not just circumstances and events in your life, although those are reconciled as well, but also those bodily organs and members that we talked about last week. If you have a situation where you have a bodily member that is trying to trouble you one way or another, and trying to you know speak forth that lie in vanity against you, just call it out by name. Call you know if it's a heart, you say heart. My heart's perfect before God because my heart is Jesus' heart. He reconciles all things back unto Himself. That word reconciliation is restoration and restitution. He's bringing everything back into harmony, into union, into oneness with Himself. You got to understand how the beginning of this verse sounds and starts. It says, "And having made peace by being one, by bringing us into oneness, by bringing us into union." So when you speak a peace or a reconciliation of a bodily organ, you're bringing that bodily organ into Christ's bodily organ. He's interposing His heart upon your heart, and your heart is beating with the rhythm of life now. Amen? You see that? There's no argument there. There's no, ch there's no chance for a, dis you know, a dissimulation of, of getting a, a variance of thought. My organs, tissues, and cells are that of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? I'm not diff and different from him. This is the body of Christ. Ephesians 5.30, I'm bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And as he is now, so am I in this world. So you can't, you've got to keep yourself into that oneness factor. And having made peace because I'm now one with him, I became a new creation. But that new creation is the one being who now is in Christ Jesus as him, with him being the head, and I'm, I'm his literal extended body down here into the earth, and so are you. And it goes on to say here, to reconcile all things unto himself. Why? Because he's the one who holds all things together by the word of his power. All things are, are, just think, all the atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons that are out in the atmosphere, they're all beckoning and hearkening unto him. They are all listening to him. They don't fly off their orbit because he's the one who's got them in divine order. 